The film begins with a police officer called Moro. Suddenly, he is summoned by his superior to conduct an arson investigation at a nightclub, but it turns out that he is too late, and he makes a poor first impression on his new co-worker. The police chief even chastises him for his performance. As a consequence, the chief hires Schultzman as a lieutenant to be his partner. The initial impression between them is not favorable, particularly for Schultzman, who has previously expressed his displeasure with Moro's behavior. Soon later, they get an emergency call about a hostage situation at a school. The scenario at school is very hectic since one of the students has the ability to blast fire from his hands. Aside from him, there's a student called Lily, who seemed to be struggling to manage her own strength at the moment. When the cops come, they instantly suspect the kid of being the mastermind behind the prior arson crime. While the other officers plan their arrest tactics, Moro approaches the kid calmly and without any weapons. He gradually soothes the child down till he is quiet. Moro and other police officers seize the child as soon as they get the chance. The cops discover two odd items that seem suspicious as a result of that event. Further research reveals that the last arson case was not the work of the kid, leading them to believe that there is someone else with the same power as the boy. A adolescent is trading the odd items at another location. It is discovered that the odd item is a prohibited substance capable of bestowing superhuman abilities on regular humans. As a result, the other teens are extremely interested in purchasing the drug since it may make them seem cooler. Meanwhile, Moro decided to leave Schultzman in order to see his closest buddy, Monte Carlo. He used to be a superhero, who often aided society, and was well-liked. He was joined by two other superheroes, Callista and Gigaman, and they eventually became a trio known as Pac Royal. However, owing to his advanced age, he has retired from his profession. He met and worked with Moro while he was a superhero. That is what keeps them connected to this day. Moro wants to approach him in order to enlist his assistance in investigating the arson case. After reading his notes, he identifies Bracero as a possible suspect in the arson case. Moro rushes out to locate Bracero without more ado. There is a research center headed called Nadja. It is the research facility that manufactures illegal drugs, which are also sold among adolescents. The next day, the police convened a meeting to discuss the arson case. Moro informs the rest of the police about Bracero just in time. Bracero has now been designated as a provisional suspect in the arson investigation. As a result, the police chief immediately orders that all squads search for Bracero. Monte then contacts Moro to inform him that Bracero is now working at a restaurant in Paris. The action shifts to Callista, who is now employed as a basketball coach. She has the ability to predict what will happen to a person in the future. At the same time, Moro pays her a visit and inquires about Bracero. Surprisingly, she seems to be very familiar with Bracero. Moro then begs for her assistance in finding Bracero, but she declines. He refuses to let up and pursues his inquiry with Schultzman. They then go to the hospital where the arson victims are being treated. The doctor informs them that one of them has already died. Surprisingly, it turns out that the patient is Bracero, who is a drug addict. The doctor also believes the material is composed of human blood. Knowing the knowledge, they must track out the true mastermind. That night, they decided to stay up late and examine the CCTV footage from the site. Moro discovers one individual who managed to flee the scene by chance from the picture. They also continue to search every hospital that is treating arson victims. After some while, they are able to locate the kid. The kid, it seems, fled and opted to be treated at a separate hospital than the other victims. It definitely raises their suspicions of him. They quickly question the kid, compelling him to reveal the identity of the dealer. By recounting what occurred to Bracero, he eventually admits that the drug was sold outside his school by a man called Ismail. He is, indeed, one of Nadja's minions, but he also turns out to be covertly carrying certain drugs and vanishes from Nadja's base. Nadja believes him of betraying him as well, so he quickly sends the rest of his men to locate Ismail. The scene shifts to Ismail, who is walking someplace. The cops are waiting for him there. He attempts to flee the scene, knowing he is going to be captured. Moro and Schultzman rush after him. They manage to apprehend him at a shop with excellent cooperation. Following that, he is questioned personally by Moro and his crew, but he decides to stay quiet. The cops are becoming perplexed. Moro, on the other hand, learns from Monte about a guy called Eclipso, 
who has the ability to instantaneously blind people. They believe that individual may have anything to do with their case. Eclipso then assaults the police station a few minutes later. He gets helped by some of Nadja's soldiers in order to release Ismail. Temporary blindness affects certain police personnel. Moro also encounters Schaltzman, who is blinded as well, forcing her to collapse. It is discovered that Moro has the ability to move or lift things with his hands, commonly known as telekinesis. He quickly utilizes his superpower to rescue Schaltzman. Meanwhile, Nadja's men quickly kidnap Ismail. Nadja plans to murder him with his own hands at his base, but first he informs Nadja that he witnessed a police officer with superpowers. This revelation piques Nadja's interest, and he promptly dispatches his men to find Moro. Simultaneously, Callista gets a vision of two of her pupils who are going to die as a result of the drug. They will perish as a result of Nadja's newly created prototype material, which is provided to them for free. They have no idea they are being used as guinea pigs. It comes out that Nadja created the material from the blood of an abducted child called Lily. She is Gigaman's daughter, and the superpower in her body is derived from his dead father's ancestors. Moro, who is aware of this, is enraged and promptly begins an investigation into the abduction. Unfortunately, he is abducted and drugged by some of Nadja's men in the midst of his inquiry. Fortunately, even in his unconscious condition, he is still able to use his superpower, causing the vehicle to be damaged by the pressure from his hands. Lena and Callista arrive just in time to rescue Moro, but as a consequence of the event, he is shot three times in the chest and suffers severe injuries. And once again, he uses his power to remove the bullets, allowing the mending process to go more quickly. They take him to Monte's home for treatment. There, Callista has just disclosed that Moro, like Pac Royale, is a superhero, but there was an event that divides them. Moro, who was still unable to completely manage his ability at the time, made an unintentional error while attempting to apprehend a criminal. Gigaman is killed as a consequence of his error. As a result, he never utilizes his abilities again. But now they've agreed to work together to rescue Lily and apprehend Nadja. While they wait for Moro's health to improve, they undertake an investigation and eventually discover Nadja's headquarters. They find out why Nadja is acting this way thanks to a scientist. It turns out that he was previously utilized as a study subject for individuals with superpowers. As a result, he has a mental condition that drives him to seek vengeance during this time. While Moro has not recovered, the drug is still present and has even been used to perpetrate theft and murder by a gang of individuals. Finally, the gang resolves to assault Nadja's headquarters with the police, but without Moro. Nadja directs his men to gather all of the drugs he has, as well as Lily, in order to flee the area. Nadja's men have superpowers as a result of these drugs. Fortunately, there is a Monte who can immediately teleport. Meanwhile, Nadja leads Lily along a separate route with his men, but he is abruptly stopped by Moro. He challenges Nadja so that he inhales more of the drug, making him stronger. Moro manages to get rid of him when he is caught off guard and instructs Schaltzman to take Lily to a safer location. He then resumes his fight with Nadja, who continues to ingest the drug until he becomes uncontrolled. Moro takes use of the chance to carry him as far as possible, shattering him and causing him to erupt in the sky. People first assumed that the explosion would also kill Moro, but he was fortunate to escape the tragedy. The movie concludes pleasantly, with the arson case solved and Lily rescued. Moro begins to embrace himself as a superhero as well.